when the cod line is untied, the fish spill out. Before putting the cod end over again, it is tied with a special slip knot. Then the cod end is dropped over, the splitting strap put on again, the tackle hooked onto the splitting strap, and the cod end hoisted and emptied. This action is repeated until all the fish still remaining in the bosom of the net are brought in. A trawler of this size brings in an average of five million pounds of fish a year. The captain again orders to shoot the gear. This time they will shoot from the port side as the starboard net must be repaired. The doors are brought overside and shackled. When the trawler net is dragging over a rough bottom, rollers are used on the foot ropes. The rollers help to keep the net from tearing as it drags over the rough sea bottom. The floats on the headline keep the net open. Again, the cables are run off. The doors, weighing from 1,200 to 1,800 pounds, bear the strain of the net and swing on their cables as the trawler continues in a wide arc at half speed. Now the doors drop and the trawler steams ahead. Again, the messenger hook is thrown over the forward warp and slides down under the water, where it passes over the aft towing warp and brings both towing warps together. The towing block is closed. The messenger hook removed. And the markers on the warps show that the net is again in towing position. Most of the fish brought in by dragging are alive when emptied from the net. And as each catch comes aboard, it must be stored and iced before the net is hauled again. First the fish are split and gutted. Then they are washed and put in the hold. Each layer of fish is separated by a layer of ice. Fish so packed will keep perfectly fresh for 10 days if necessary. When it is time to haul again, they release the towing block and wind in the warps. The heavy doors come up first. They are unshackled and hung in the gallows chain. Then the wings of the net come up. Note the position of the net in relation to the ship as the net is hauled in. The slack twine of the net is hauled in by hand 
and both sides brought together so the fish will not escape. As they haul in the net, the cod end floats up. Again, the lazy decky goes to work, hauling in the bosom of the net. After the splitting strap is put on, the cod end is hoisted in by winch and the cod end emptied. Again, the cod end rope is tied. And cod end put over side. This operation is repeated over and over until no fish remain in the net. The fish are emptied into what they call the checkerboard. These rectangular shaped compartments keep the fish from slipping over the deck. Sometimes strange looking fish get into the net. Here are some odd ones. A skate, a sculpin, and a shark. These go overboard again. But the fishermen welcome the halibut of which they catch a fair quantity. The bulk of the catch are haddock and cod. After each haul is stored away, the checkerboard is thoroughly cleaned. The cook is a very important man on the trawler. Good hearty food and lots of it is what these seafaring men get. So after six days at sea, six busy days and nights, for the gear is set and hauled every hour and a half, the trawler, full to the hatches, steams toward its home port. The minute the trawler docks, the fish are unloaded, for such a perishable commodity must be handled quickly. As each pen in the hold is emptied, the pen boards are brought up and made ready for the next trip out. Some of the cold storage plants engage inspectors to check the temperature of the fish as it is brought in to ensure top quality for the consumer. The great percentage of the catch is filleted and marketed either fresh or fresh frozen. 
Modern machinery speeds up the business of filleting cod, haddock, and other fish that pass along the conveyor to the packaging room. There it is weighed and packaged, ready for the consumer within a few hours after the trawler has docked. Within a few hours also, and even as the catch is being processed, the trawler, ready for the banks, again heads seaward, for the harvesting of the sea is continuous.